Well, hey, Pastor, it's Richard Chancy with 24 to Double, and I am doing a, uh, a bonus round uh, on this idea of doing a year-end review. Um, uh, today, I'm talking about 10 and a half reasons you need to be doing a year-end review. Now, Monday, I did a full breakdown of how I do my year-end review, and because I was pushing uh, that training out through a software program on my computer to live stream, uh, it didn't get nearly the reach that my normal videos do. So, I thought I'd do a bonus round here and just convince you that you need to do a year in review. Now, for those of you that missed it or you want a really good structure for how to do a year in review, you can click the link above this video, that 24 to double forward slash uh, dot com forward slash year in review. Um, and you can go over there and sign up for it and you'll get not only that video, but also um, a download of uh, the video. Uh, you'll get the download of the video as well as the download of the document that I'm talking about in that video and I uh, just got a weird message on my phone so I hope that's not uh, meaning that nobody's hearing me. So if you're on and you hear me, if you can give me a, uh, if you can like the uh, video or something like that or write a comment, that'd be huge. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep working on this. Okay, so here's the 10 and a half reasons that you need to do a year in review. Uh, the number one thing is to hear God's voice. Now, I know for most of you, you're spending a lot of time doing that, prepping sermons and doing that kind of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about from a macro standpoint of hearing God's voice for you and your ministry. Most pastors that I know uh, are experience a gap in ministry. And that gap is the gap between the ministry that they were called to and the one that they're actually experiencing. And I think it's important uh, that at least once or twice a year, you're taking a big chunk of time to sit down and truly hear God's voice about the vision for your life, your ministry, uh, and your organization, your church. Uh, number two, the second reason to do a year in review is to break the cycle of confusion. A lot of times when we get stuck, we're stuck because we just haven't taken the time to do the one thing that will get us unstuck, and that's to think. And you need chunks of time to take a step back, look at the problems, and go, how do we get unstuck from this thing? Uh, number three, you need to define what's working. I think it's, uh, it's very easy in our culture, especially when it's so easy to see what other churches are doing really well, it's so easy for us to look at what we're doing and think what I'm doing is not good enough. And sitting down and writing down what's working will help you come back in line with just how much God is blessing you. You don't have to have the biggest church. You don't have to have uh, the best givers in your church. God is doing something amazing. And I think it makes a lot of sense to take a few minutes and just go, hey, God, remind me, remind me of your blessing. Don't let me turn the things that you've blessed me with into a curse by not focusing on them or focusing on the wrong things. The fourth uh, reason is to realize what's broken. Um, I think it's really important to kind of look at your church. And, and in here I put old wine skin just to remind myself. Um, there are some new ways of doing church. There are some new ways of reaching people that are going to be very hard to fit into an old way of doing church. There are things like Facebook live streaming, which we're doing right now. There's things like email uh, that you can use to really reach out to people, to help people in your church, invite their friends. There's a lot of things that we can uh, change that will uh, help us go forward. And then on the other side of that, there's a lot of effort that we put into things that simply just aren't working anymore. And pastor, if I gave you three minutes, you could probably give me a list of 10 things that your church does that just don't work anymore. Uh, in fact, one of the lessons that I learned when I was working for uh, John Maxwell was actually when we had Peter Drucker, um, I think he came in or he lived, uh, Skyped in for one of the trainings we did. And uh, Peter Drucker said, we had this, uh, this idea called systematic abandonment that we use, meaning we would start things knowing that they would work now, but stop working in the future. And we would kill them before they stopped working. And I think that's a huge idea for us to grab hold of as uh, leaders in our churches. Uh, number, number five uh, reason to do a year in review is simply to know the one thing. I talk about this a lot in all of our trainings, but the book, The One Things, had a huge impact on me. And the book, The One Thing, the big line in it is, what's the one thing? Such being done makes everything else easy, either easier or unnecessary. What's the one thing? Such being done makes everything else either easier or or unnecessary. And I think taking time to really hear God's voice and say, hey, do more of this is critical because when you figure out what that one thing is, I think what you'll see is um, church growth, giving, and spiritual maturity goes up and to the right on the chart uh, in your organization. 
Uh, the sixth reason is uh, to do a review is to align yourself with God. I feel like I'm constantly trying to get get God in line with what we're doing. Okay, this year in review helps me sit down and get myself back in line with what God is already doing. It also makes me incredibly grateful to be able to look at what He's doing and then join up with Him, partner with Him, partner with the local church to do what God is trying to do in the world through the church. Uh, number seven is to fill the gap between the ministry uh, you're capable of and the one you're experiencing. Uh, I pre, uh, maybe I gave a, a prelude to this earlier, but um, for most of you, here's what I know. There is a gap between the ministry you're leading and the one that you know that you're capable of. Now, if there's not that gap for you, pastor, something's wrong. Okay, you've stopped hearing God's voice about where you're going and what he's calling you to do. There should always be a gap. When you look forward, there should be a gap. When you look back, you should be in awe. In fact, most guys, when they look back, they say, I never knew it would be like this. I never envisioned that God would do this in my ministry. And the reason you never envisioned it, because he's only going to give you the next step. That thing may seem huge, but he's only going to give you as much as you can put your mind around and still keep moving forward. Okay, so it's a huge reason to do that is to figure out what the gap is and start to fill that gap so God can expand the vision for your church. Uh, number eight is uh, to 10x vision. Now, you may be thinking, well, Richard, all we're trying to do is double our church, which is a huge thing. In fact, in 24 to double is what we talk about, how to double your church, okay? Um, but if, if that's your vision, what would happen if you said, hey, instead of going from 100 to 200, we're going to go from 100 to 1,000. Now, you might be saying, uh, Richard, you know, you don't know my city. You don't know where I am. Here's the thing. This is what I want to challenge you to do in your year in review is to just say, what if? What if we were going to 10x the number of people? What if? Is there room for that in America, Pastor? Absolutely there is. There's plenty, there's plenty of people that don't know Jesus, that don't know uh, the value of being in a relationship with Jesus, what it means today and what it means 100 years from now, right? Plenty of room for it. The reason I love the 10x mentality is if you were to say, hey, we're going to 10x our church in the next uh, two years, what that makes you do tomorrow to wake up and do. Because doubling your church is a, it's a great start, but I think there's plenty of room for us to continue that thing. Thinking 10x will change the way you think about how to go forward, and I think that's a really valuable thing to do. Uh, number nine is to get on a wall. Uh, this comes from Nehemiah. I was sitting down with a friend of mine a year ago. And uh, we were talking about these different opportunities. He's a, the men's pastor at a big church here in Atlanta. And he said, man, we could do this or we could do that. And I really want to do some of this. He said, but right now, right now I'm on a wall. And then he just kept talking. I was like, whoa, man, what did you just say? And he said, I'm on a wall. And I thought, am I on a wall? And then I went back to my house and I built a wall. I, I started figuring out, hey, what is, God, what is it that God has called us to do? And we feel like it is to invest in the people who are investing in the people in the church. And that's you, Pastor. So get on a wall. Know what the wall is and climb up on that thing. Uh, number 10 is um, rest for your soul. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Pastor, most of the pastors that we have the opportunity to love on and serve through 24 to Double or any of the other things uh, that we have are in lack of rest for their soul because they feel the constant pressure to measure up to the people around them, the churches around them, and the big names in our industry. And here's what I want to tell you, Pastor. You need rest for your soul. That's why that scripture speaks to you at a core level, Pastor. If you don't do anything else on this list, you need to get some time in the next couple of weeks to get some rest for your soul. And then the last thing, the ten and a half reason, uh, the number 0.5, is because leaders lead. Pastor, if you are, um, if your vision is short, if there's no gap between where you are and where God's calling you, if you are not leading from a place of rest, then you are not leading, Pastor. And the one thing that leaders have to do in an organization, if it's going to go out and do what God's called it to do, the one thing that the leader has to do, Pastor, is to lead. Okay, I hope you found this incredibly beneficial. Again, if you go to 24to-double.com forward slash year in review, the link is above. You click on that. You sign up. You're going to get on our email list. 
um, which you can opt out of right away if you want. The reason we do that is because God has called us to add value to you, to invest in you, and to help you reach the people who are far from God, but right outside the doors of your church. So we want to start that relationship with you. As soon as you opt in for that, you're going to go to a thank you page that's got about a 30-minute uh, rundown of how to do a year-end review and then the document that I use for that. You can take it and use it as a framework for what's going to work for you, but I think what you're going to find with this is it's going to be incredibly valuable as a starting point for spending a couple of days with God, one day looking back and one day looking forward. And then my big ask is this, Pastor. You'll be on our email list then. Just reply to any of those emails after you do this and let me know how it goes. That's fuel for us. That lights the fire of me and Pastor Lawson and the whole 24 to double team when we know that what we're doing for you is adding value. Okay, so go on over there now and get that, and I will catch you on the next live stream. Hey, thanks, uh, T. Keith Hicks. T. Keith Hicks. Is that your pastor name, uh, Keith? T. Keith Hicks? That sounds like, man, that's what I would go by um, if it was me. Hey, thanks, Derek, for being on. And uh, anybody that's watching this after the fact, the link will be live for as long as there's an internet uh, unless Jesus comes back, in which case it'll just be a video of this wall. All right. Thanks. I'll catch you on the next live stream.